Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing, ladies? Great. How are hey, you? Right, yeah. I'm doing good. How, how are y'all doing? Good. Staying good. cool inside. <laughs> Yes. yes, it is extremely hot in, in Dallas, Texas, but we got we got a very, very fun show today because I know we're going to laugh our butts off. So uh, without further ado, Kiana, let's get this thing rolling. So today's guest is a familiar face and voice for our viewers. He is an actor and comedian who won three Emmys for his role as Robert on Everybody Loves Raymond and has more than 100 TV and film credits to his name. His new film, Cha Cha Roll Smooth, is now streaming on Apple TV+. Plus. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Brad Garrett. Hey. Oh, hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Oh, it's great to be here. Which one of you were the chief? Oh, uh, take a guess. <laughs> I'm going to go with the uh, bottom square. <laughs> oh, you are. Hey, Chief. What's up, knockout? That, That's what that, the KO listen, is, that, that, right? is, that is. That is incorrect. The, zero, the circle gets the square. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> it kind of looks like but a no. very... When I looked at the opening, it looked like a very diverse Brady Bunch. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. You know the opening of the Brady Bunch. Absolutely. Did you ever and I'm see, Alice. Am I, am I alone? Am I alone on that? Okay. No, I'll, I'll, sing, oh, no, no. I'll, I'll sing the song if you want. I mean, your ears will bleed, but I'll sing it for you. Yeah, funny, can I hear it? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Okay. The chief says no. Sorry, no. no. sorry about a lovely lady. There we go, Emily. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. No. No. No, I, I, I'm definitely Alice in this uh, Brady Bunch. So, uh, <laughs> so Brad, it is. Well, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> well, Brad, you know what? What? When I was a lot younger, people used to say to me, "I look like Greg Brady and Herman Munster had a child." <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was told. But you know, people were mean. People were very, very mean. Okay. <laughs> But Brad, ahead, man, it's I'll such a pleasure. I'll let you do you your thing. <laughs> gotcha. So it's a it's a pleasure having you with us today, and uh, thank you so much for joining us on Chief Chat. Uh, can you let our viewers know where you're joining us from today? Uh, yes, uh, actually, I'm on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, you see, yeah, I didn't know this would be. Uh, I didn't know. I, I heard this was audio only. Um, no, I did. Um, I'm, I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm here visiting my money, and um, I have a show tonight at my comedy club at the MGM. Oh, I was about to say that's a pretty impressive throne you're sitting on right now. So I mean, I, I, if, if I had to use much. the restroom, well, you know I definitely would love to do it. On I, I would love to send you one of my thrones, Chief. This is uh, this is the new wicker style by uh, by uh, Fancy Flush. New, uh, wicker style. It says it's almost time to restart. Restart now. You've you've chosen to restart your device. No, no, not now. I'm so I'm so bad with tech. You know, I really, really am. So excuse me uh, if this. Now I I look like I'm on a terrible audio delay, but not on your line. Right, not not no, no, you, okay. You look perfect on our side. Okay. No, but speaking of tech and streaming services, your new film, Cha Cha Real Smooth, is available now on Apple TV Plus. So can you tell us more about that movie and your role? Yes. Well, I um I have a tiny role in the movie. Uh no lines. I just uh I, I'm mowing a lawn in the background. Um it's <laughs> 
It's it's a terrific little movie, actually, by the creator, a uh, writer, director, star. There, he, no, that's that's me. This guy right there, Cooper Rafe, so incredibly talented. He's very very uh, prolific and really a terrific writer and director. And it's kind of a coming of age movie uh, for uh, a person that kind of just recently got out of college and isn't sure where his life is headed, which to me, I've always felt that, you know, I think we can always, uh, I think coming of age is something that almost is, is repetitive in our life. I mean, I think there are different mm-hmm. times in our life at many different ages where we're trying to figure out what we're doing, who we are, what, what feeds us, you know, uh, as an individual, what, what do we want to do with our life career wise, personally, so I think coming of age is something that uh, you could do really at almost any age. And I think the different characters in the movie are really kind of trying to decide uh, what they're about, how they fit in in this family dynamic. And we had a great time uh, uh, of, of filming it. And I think this this guy Cooper is going to be a, a big star. He's, he's just, you know, it's rare that someone's a really good actor, director and writer. And he just encompasses all of that. So, so I did have a question. So, to audition for this movie did did you have to do the cha cha line dance? I, I'm trying to figure out how, how good your dance um, moves are. Uh, well, I did the uh, I did the funky NASA. Then I went right into the robot, <laughs> and um, I ended with the chicken dance, which is uh, <laughs> what the uh, Italian and Jewish people do uh, all the time at the wedding when they uh, are, uh, drink too much. But no, luckily I didn't have to dance, but um, uh, uh, I think everyone else did. Yeah, <laughs> luckily. <laughs> and then Brad, you have your own co- comedy club in Vegas yeah. and you perform there regularly. So how does doing stand up for a live audience compare to filming TV and movies? Well, you know, it's a good question. It's very, very different. And I think why I'm doing stand up uh, so many years later is because it's something that I really still love. It's um, it's really the only thing in the entertainment industry where you're totally alone. You're on your own. You're your own writer, your own critic, your own director, your own performer. And um, it's different every night. And it still scares me and makes me unsure. Uh, and I like to do things that challenge me. That's why right now I'm wearing no pants. Um, that's another thing. Yeah, um, where well, you're you're, on, the, you're TV, on the commode, so you're well, not supposed to have pants yeah, on. Yeah, I'm on the commode. I'm on a... <laughs> I like this cheese. He gets me. Um, you know, film and TV are very, very collaborative, which is also wonderful. Because uh, especially coming from the world of stand-up, uh, it's nice to when you're in a production where you have a lot of support and help and uh, terrific people you're being surrounded by, like in Chacha, like on Raymond. You know, you have writers, you know, who are going to be able to catch your voice and that you can depend on. You have good directors. You have uh, a crew that's your backbone. So it kind of feels good to have all of that when you when you work on a production which is also why i think i like stand-up because it's you know it's it's scary because it you know you live or die by it there's no one to blame uh except yourself if it works or it doesn't and it's literally different every night i mean all these years later you know it it just feels different uh, because the audience is different or a line may work one night that doesn't another night Um, it's a lot like theater really why why theater is so exciting so, so during during the height of the pandemic, um, you you know they canceled a lot of the live shows that you were able to do. Um, yeah. So, how did you keep engaged with your fans during during that time? Uh, well, uh, I have no fans, so it was it was pretty <laughs> easy. There's just this uh, there's just this, uh, there's this one couple that that lives in my attic at the house that comes down <laughs> once a month and tells me how talented I am. Then they go back up. Um, I, I really, uh, I'm really, you know, I'm terrible on social media. It's really not my thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I'm sure it's generational. I feel odd 
uh, you know, being someone that, that was lucky enough to be on TV or whatever. And then it's like, here, you can, you can watch me 24 hours. You can see what I'm, what kind of yogurt I like. I find it all pretty frightening. Um, but nowadays when you're involved in TV or film, you have to, it's almost contractual that you have to keep, uh, some kind of social media, a presence and, um, you know, so you have to kind of play the game, but I really, uh, I, I'm kind of a hermit and except for the, the, the awful, uh, scenario that the COVID caused throughout the world, obviously, I kind of liked being at home, uh, uh, just kind of, uh, you know, just really chilling, which I really rarely get to do. I've always been on the road or always doing, but there's something nice about, uh, um, I, I have a, a new wife uh, who uh, uh, is just terrific. Doesn't speak English at all, so it's a, it's an incredible relationship. And uh, so we uh, you know we've been together a long time. We were supposed to get married, but she uh, you know she started dating again, which made it very difficult for a lot of my plans. Needless to say, um, no, but 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 um, our wedding was canceled four times, twice because of the oh, pandemic. Wow. Uh, once because she says uh, something about uh, hell burning or, or freezing over. She said uh, when hell freezes over. That was the third time. And then there was like a fire. We were There were a huge brush fire where we live. So the fires like burnt down half of the venue. We were going to get married. So it's been a, so we just recently got married in uh, November. I know I'm a little off topic. I'm on a new medication, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> but uh, no, my point is, it's really, you know, uh, you really find out what your relationship is about when you're homebound and yeah. uh, you really can't do much. Um, I'm not very social. Uh, this is something about me. It's just, um, I don't know, it's just the way it is. So uh, I'm really going to miss having the COVID excuse for not getting together with people you really don't want to see. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, I'd love to have dinner with you, but you know, uh, got that Rona, you know. Uh, it's like, <laughs> you know, I've been coughing, um, so you know, uh, I'm still using that. But um. so, so what? What was that? What was that first show like? After not being able to do an actual comedy show for a couple of years or a year and a half or whatever the case may be, what was that first show like? Getting back on stage in front of that audience. Well, you know, the, our club was closed about a year and a half in Vegas, and uh, it, it was a rough time. I mean, this town, you know, obviously Vegas is, is only lasts because of tourists and everyone that lives full time in Vegas, 80 percent of the population are hotel employees. So it was a very, very scary time for this town. The first show back, everyone was still masked. Um, I came out in a hazmat suit uh, <laughs> that I thought would be that I thought would be a wonderful, wonderful laugh, and it just kind of died. I uh, I kind of looked like a uh, like a Jewish beekeeper, so um, <laughs> that didn't go over well. But it's tough to have an audience masked because uh, you know I don't get a lot of laughs as it is, as you could see in this interview. <laughs> So um, when, when the audience is now wearing masks, you know, it's like uh, it's it's it, it was it was interesting. Just a lot of people going, oh, 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 oh. you know, so we had to do we had to do that for a couple months. And um, but it what, what's incredible is how people were missing that contact that human contact, which the arts brings, uh, you know, to, to you, you and so many people, you know, you take it for granted. There's nothing like live music, live comedy, theater. It's just a connection and it's an escape. And even with the movies closed, you know, when you take all that away from people, um, I think it really, really affects them. I'm worried about uh, the young generation, what they're calling now, the COVID kids that had to go through uh, many ages too, that, that were, were really frightened. 
seen the world changed. Everyone's wearing masks. I'm not allowed to touch this. I can't hug my grandparents. Things that were really unexplainable to such young children. And for kids that suffer from anxiety or depression or things, and I've, I've had both, actually, um, I, I think this is just another layer of, um, of uh, like an emotional trauma that I think down the line they're going to, is you know they're going to have to unwrap and, and and deal with. I think it's been really scary times. So as much as we weren't able to perform, um, it's just now great to have that that contact again. And people need to laugh, man. This world is, uh, you know, coming from an old guy. This world is, uh, it's in rough shape. I'm I'm surprised that it's gotten to this point of such uh, discourse and 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 division and and everything else. So I'm glad we can laugh about it. Absolutely. Have some humor. Have all the clubs open again. When are you all going to come to the the comedy club? You know what you should do, Chief? Chief, are you still with me? I'm still here. <laughs> okay, you look like you're uh, thinking about quitting. No, no, I'm thinking about <laughs> when am I I'm thinking about when I'm coming to the comedy show. I'm like, how can I get how can I conjure up an excuse to go to Vegas? Well, you're in the Air Force, cor correct? Yeah, Nellis, Nellis Air Force Base is out there. So, so you're out of now? Are, are you? Uh, well, I'm sure you have access to a plane. What do you? <laughs> what, what do you? Uh, <laughs> what, 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 what do you fly? What do you fly? One of those uh, crop dusters? What do you got? The two seater? Um, you know, American. <laughs> okay, American. You, you should you should bring this lovely group because um, they're both your wives. You're Mormon. Am I correct? <laughs> I I am. How could you tell? Yeah. I could tell because they're, because they're both fine, and I know how the chief works. <laughs> no, but you know what you should do, and I'm going to throw this out there. You should come to the comedy club, bring your uh, uh, your team, uh, come to a show, and you should you should do one of your live things from the show. Uh, and and talk to some of the up and coming comics that are really on their way and do and we'll set you up on the stage at the club and uh, that way it doesn't have to look like you're uh, you're in a holding cell I don't know where they have you chief but it looks like you're waiting for the warden um, I am and, and you can, please don't shake your head darling you don't have to laugh but don't judge me the woman of it. I'm not begging you <laughs> what I'm saying of you and you can come out and you could you could visit Nellis you know. And, uh, and 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 come out to the show, and so you have an open invitation, if, if you would I'll, like, I'll and that's that, that's anytime. Bring your team, and you'll be our guests. I would love Absolutely. that as my thank you to what you have done and continue to do for everybody. Thank you so much, and I, I'm definitely going to have to uh, we're going to have to figure out a way to to make that happen. So we'll we'll, we'll connect with your team, and and we'll, we'll we'll make a trip to Vegas, and we'll do a live chief chat from Vegas. How about I think that would be great. You know, the government has a lot of money. You know, you may remember the military. I think, speaking of toilets, I think I think uh, 10 years ago, you guys spent like $4,200 for a bidet or something crazy. You remember back in the day when, oh, when, yeah. when we, the toilets we, we on, put it in a port the ship. We put them in the port johns We put them in the port johns The bidets in the port johns So that's... In the port johns Yeah. You know, I have a bidet. I'm not bragging. But I have one that seats five for dinner. <laughs> Hello. Okay. All right. I guess I'll wait for my Ooh, next question. Okay. <laughs> That's my cue. Um, so Brad, you've done it all. You've won Emmys for Everybody Loves Raymond. You've headlined your own sitcoms with Till Death and Single Parents. And you're also a familiar voice to millions of kids with your work in popular animated movies like Ratatouille and Tangled. So what has been your favorite role so far and why? Well, anything that involves nudity. You know, <laughs> I um, I know a lot of you aren't aware. I, uh, wow, that's a tough question. Well, I probably have to say, uh, you know, it was Raymond. I mean, uh, playing Robert really obviously changed my life. I was very lucky to land on a show like that. We were all lucky. We had no idea, you know, what we were doing, what the show was going to be. And we just ended up having some great writers and a, and a good cast. And uh, so, I, I, you know, that started the ball rolling for me. And I, I loved playing that character. I related to him a lot. You know, uh, growing up, I had uh, 
two brothers that were a lot more uh, uh, efficient in life than I was and kind of, uh, you know, much cuter, more popular, more athletic, everything I wanted to be. So I think there was a, a, a time where growing up, I, well, I think we all feel like Robert at one point in our life or another. Robert was just, you know, that was 24-7 for him. And I love playing a character that that really uh, uh, is flawed. You know, it's it's uh, it, it's fun to play someone that's still trying to figure it out, uh, which is what was cool about Cha-Cha. Not my character, but uh, Cooper's character, going back to that. It, it's fun to play people that don't have it figured out, you know, and it's fun for the audience. You know, we never want to watch characters that, really have it together and if they do they're usually more the villain type well you know in 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 a film a movie we we uh or or tv we want to root for people we we want to we want to pull for people we can identify with and that's usually the underdogs that's why we love it when when the underdog you know wins the pennant or, or the super bowl and they come out of nowhere and they worked harder and they were the ones that really weren't noticed and all of a sudden they're in the big dance uh, I think for actors, it's fun to play those people. That's awesome. And we have um, many of American heroes and fa- and their families um, watching us live right now. Do you have anything you'd uh, like to share with them? Uh, I do. I do. Um, and, and this is what's wonderful. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but um, I'm a woman. No, uh, I, I, yes, I would like to share what, what I really want to share is, is, is to thank you. You know, a lot of people are like, Brad, why are you doing chief chat? Is it because of the incredible allure that uh, chief KO has and his connections <laughs> in the industry and his, his incredible way with people and how he's warm and fuzzy. Uh, that's one of the reasons, but the main reason why I'm on here is to just, uh, and, and I'm honored to be here. You know, not many people call anymore, but is to really say thank you to our heroes uh, uh, who who keep us safe and who really, really know what freedom is about, not the political crazy jargon that's running around uh, these days, but they're the real, the real uh, 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 heroes when it comes to our democracy and our freedom because they have to put that out there every day. So I want to say thank you. And uh, I just know that you are so loved and appreciated. And we even have a veterans uh, uh, a discount. Um, uh, if you're a veteran and you come to the comedy club after the show, I will actually lick your forehead. Now, I know <laughs> what when you hear deal. that. It's, wow. Yeah. Thank you very much. And that, that includes you. Of course, I have a spotter, <laughs> someone to hold me up because, you know, I know it's not going to be easy to get to some of you. I'm a large, a large man. But um, uh, but we actually have a, a veterans program. We have a lot of people that come out from Nellis and we always take care of our veterans and we always will. And uh, uh, so so thank you for that. For those that are watching, all four of you. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, thank you for the love and support uh, to Chief Chad, and and, uh, and thank you for for kind of self diagnose well, self assessing me and, and, and my warm and fuzziness uh, that that I bring to the table. Although I'm not really that well connected, I probably uh, if there's four people watching, three of them I know personally, so they just yeah. they're here to support it. <laughs> I know the feeling. But, and listen, but, I, I want you to know, Chief, that wasn't that wasn't like a Hollywood thing hey come to the club we'll do that is a sincere thing and i think it would be really great to have a couple comics on for 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 our our uh, service people out there that are maybe like hey how do you get into it how do you start out that are still doing it that have maybe done one or two late night shows and are still and we'll set you up too and we're going to set you up nicely so if you really really want to do it reach out and it can be and it can be cool and we'll We'll show you a good time and uh, we'll we'll protect you for a couple of days as you've always been protecting us well i appreciate it and uh, but but i don't i don't need a lick on the forehead i think we're 
We're good. Lent, Lent is over with. It's already passed. So I, yeah, I don't. You don't have to lick me on my phone for it. We're we're gonna we're gonna do it my way, Chief. Okay. okay. Yep. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. okay. No, no so, licking on the forehead. Uh, you're not the first person to say that. Okay. <laughs> but uh, you work you work with a ton of legends uh, throughout your career. So can you tell us like who are your comedy heroes? Uh, and also how did you, how did you get your own kind of own style of humor? Where'd you where'd, where'd you get that from? Well, uh, a lot of my heroes really growing up was uh, Robin Williams, who I was able to work on his last series with him, uh, Rodney Dangerfield, who I got to know a little bit. Um, Don Rickles was a real influence for me. A lot of my uh, act is really working off the audience. Uh, it's a lot of improv. It's kind of going off the people really, really in the crowd. I mean, I, you know, I'll have a few bits that I go to to kind of mix it up. But back in the day when I was opening for, you know, big, big headliners in Vegas and I was the opening act, you know, no one ever wants to see the opening act, right? You know, you, you pay tickets to see Sammy Davis or Sinatra or whatever. Who's this guy walking out, taking up 20 minutes of my time? So you really learn quickly how to scramble uh as as a beginning comedian especially as an opening act because when you come out there and they pay a high ticket price to see a big name most people will come in late enough to miss the opening act or they'll talk through your set or they're really not and rightfully so that's how you earn your stripes if you will by really you know cutting your teeth with a crowd that is not there for you so i just started to kind of improv my material wasn't that strong and i just started riffing on the crowd and making fun of the people coming in and kind of giving it back to them and that kind of became uh, a little bit of my style it's rather inappropriate it's not that pc and um but it's fun you know as i tell people if you're gonna catch my part of the show make sure you can laugh at yourself make sure you have a good sense of humor uh because especially nowadays, my act, people are like, you know, what are you going to do with your act? I mean, with what's going on and, and the PC and the cancellation, you got to do what you do. I've been doing this a long time and I, I, I can't change with whatever the new, you know, cult following is that day. I don't think, um, you know, people are telling you, you can't say this, you can't write that that painting's inappropriate. You, you know, we got to be very careful of that kind of censorship that is, that is really starting in the arts. Um, you know, we, we, we need the Chappelle's, we need the Ricky Gervais. These guys are almost prophets for, for, you know, uh, freedom of speech and what you don't have to like it. That's why we can turn it off or go to a different show or walk out, but everyone's voice needs to be heard. And it's really important. So that's kind of my style has always been kind of riffing on the audience, kind of the roasty toasty thing way before that ever became, uh, you, you know, those roast specials on Comedy Central. Yeah. So Don Rickles was really the king of that. And when I was a kid, I would watch him on The Tonight Show and I couldn't believe his irreverence. I couldn't believe the things he would say to Johnny Carson or Ed McMahon or Jay Leno or especially Letterman. I was like, this guy is unbelievable. He was able to break that wall of just being a comedian. He really, he got under people's skin and I found it wonderfully funny because it makes you feel vulnerable. And there's, there's something great when, when you feel vulnerable in a, in a comedic way. I, I think, uh, I think it's almost a release valve when you could, especially nowadays, when you can look around and and say oh my gosh you know we don't have to be perfect we're all flawed we all have things that are funny about us we don't have to be so serious um so like a robin williams who was very uh improv oriented um you know he was really one of my heroes one of the kindest people in the world um but he worked like that he worked without a net he would just walk out uh, there's never been anyone close to his uh, brilliance as far as working in the moment, being able to take a crowd and just turn it on its head.
And um, so they were my influences. I know these answers are long-winded, so forgive me. Yes, no, darling. Yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> so many people may not know this, but you actually got your start on Star Search. Yes. Am I right? Not me, like what? That is okay. <laughs> what would, that what, is what was your performance like? I want to know. What did you do on Star Search? Uh, it was very. Uh, it was well. <laughs> I don't know if you really want to know. I did a lot of uh, impressions <laughs> at the time. I did a lot of material about my height. Uh, I did Bill Cosby when you were able to do him. Um, <laughs> I did impressions of like Jim McNatowski from Taxi, that old show that way again before your time. I did a lot of different, uh, I did Rodney out there. You know, I did Rodney impressions. And I just, it was a very simple pedestrian type of act. It was, uh, you know, my uh, my connection with an audience is something I've always felt was kind of more organic. Uh, and, and I think I got a lot of mileage out of that, being able to relate more to an audience. Now, on Star Search, you had literally a minute and a half to perform your comedy. So that's, it, it, you know, it's like your first bit, your first 30 seconds is going to set the tone for if you move on. But I was, you know, I was uh, uh, just shy of 24 years old. I was 23 years old. Um, I started doing stand-up when I was like 17 in high school. Um, so I had a little time. But back in those days, it was the first year of Star Search. So it got a lot of, those are the days when, you know, there were only five or four channels on TV. There was just four networks. And if a show hit, people were really watching so that show really started a lot of things for me. It started my uh, my ability to be an opening act for different uh, headliners in Vegas and, and Tahoe and Reno. So that kind of uh, jump started that. I worked very clean in those days. Uh, I, I've morphed into a, uh, a miserable potty mouth person today. I really am very different than what's online, what's on YouTube. Uh, I've just turned into a, a different a comic, I think. But but in the beginning, it was pretty it was pretty easy and friendly and nothing that inventive, nothing where you're going to go. I think one of my first reviews uh, from Star Search was uh, instantly forgettable, uh, <laughs> which is, you know, makes you, it makes you, that was the line. And it goes, oh, well, that's, uh, that's going to, maybe I should work harder. But, you know, that's all part of starting out. You know, that's yeah, all it's yeah. it's you know, you're going to take some hits in anything in life. Right. That's part of it. And so, Brad, we have so many people watching right now and we have um, a lot of people in the comments. So I'm going to jump into the comments with you really quickly. Um, okay. The one comment that keeps jumping out by a lot of people is they love you and the Jimmy John's commercials. The King of Cold <laughs> So um, everyone just was saying that they love your work in in the Jimmy John's commercials. Thank and you. Um, Lori says she loves you. She thinks you're hilarious. So now you've got three fans, the two in the attic, Thanks. and now you've got Lori. Yeah. So, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. Thank you, Lori. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And um, Christine was asking, what's your what was your favorite character to be the voice of? your voiceover character? Boy, that's that's a good one. Uh, well, I really loved Bloat. I loved playing Bloat. That was kind of my first bigger animated character for Disney, the the puffer fish in Nemo. Um, I really liked playing Hook Hand in, in Rapunzel. I'm a horrible singer because I'm tone deaf, and they wanted that. But um, I've always been very self-conscious in singing a song, and that was the first animated uh, uh, picture where I, I actually had to sing a song. And uh, the song was, uh, you got a dream, I got a dream. What was it, honey? She's not listening. Okay, she's <laughs> probably, probably, packing the, probably packing the luggage. Go back to bed, honey. <laughs> Just trying to pay the rent. Okay. Um, but I had a lot of fun in hook hand. It's amazing working for Disney because it's just, you know, I grew up being a huge animation fan and, you know, you find yourself in the studios all of a sudden where they, 
where they did some of the you know most iconic uh, animated films. So uh, so Pixar, I did a lot of the, the early ones. I like playing Gusto in Ratatouille was a lot of fun um, to play the, the French chef. Uh, though a lot of French people have told me it's a horrible horrible accent. Which is because I said to myself, you know, that is the way they do it. But to me, it is. And um, Leonella, she says hi from South Dakota. She thinks you're funny. Hello, as well. South Dakota. We're now up to four. We're up to four. Okay. Let me write um, these names down so my therapist. Yeah. I can go right. Them. Yeah. I can only count to ten. So hopefully we don't we don't break that. Oh, we're, that? we're both really we're really in trouble. Um, yes, everyone, you're hysterical. Thank you for sharing. You're freaking oh, amazing. Five. Five? <laughs> yeah, five fans. We're moving That's up. That's very everyone, nice. So much love. Um, everyone loves that you're here. Um, thanks you well, for supporting a lot to me, trip. really. Um, Thank you. I also shared with my grandparents today because I grew up um, spending my summers with them in uh, New York City. And we always well, watch. In the uh, city? Yes, in the city. Uh, well, wow. Staten Island. Staten Island. Okay. But, okay. But still, it's part of it. And um, well, are they with, is your grandfather, is your grandfather with the mob? Well, I can't, we can't talk about okay. that. You know that. He's either yeah. that or a fireman, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You can't, yeah, one yeah. or the other. But uh, yeah. what a fun <laughs> we all work for each other anyways. Been. Yeah. And I sure, told him exactly. that I was interviewing to you today. And he said, well, my grandma has to text for him because he has a phone that you can't text. And um, he said, Pop Pop said, cool, he's very tall. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, it so. sounds, like, <laughs> sounds, sounds like Pop Pop needs a new medication. <laughs> Pop Pop's 92. Yeah. So the Is fact he really that, 92? He's 92, oh. my Pop Pop. Yeah. God um, bless it. Well, you know, tell him hi for me. But since he's 92, just go, the tall guy says hi. <laughs> that's how you have my, to do it. My favorite with that is when I talk to him, he's just like, say that again, Emmy. Say that again, Emmy. And then I'll say yeah. it like you really loud. It will go, you don't have to shout. And I'm just like, yeah, is it? <laughs> what's wrong with you and so yeah. yes but my grandpa is very excited but i guess wanted to make sure i knew that you were very tall um oh, what a sweetie. yes and then caleb loves your work great work so much so many hearts um someone in the chat said emily you and brad would be the bestest of friends I'm interested in exploring that if you are too. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I could be I could be your second pop pop. Yes, I've always wanted yes. a second pop pop. What'd you say, Emmy? Get I the mush out of your mouth. <laughs> Perfect. But we would just thank you so much for being here. I mean, the comments are are endless. And so yes, thank you so much. My new it's BFF. My honor. Thank you for what. Yeah. Thank you for what all of you do. That's the real heavy lifting. We appreciate you and wish you always the best. And so, so I, I got well, a couple of comments. You in Vegas, Chief. Absolutely, but I, I got a couple of comments on my page too that I want to read for you. Uh, I got oh, Richie boy. Whitmer. He's watching from Normandy, France, with his parents. So wow, you, you what's got, up, Richie? You got international love. That's uh, I will take it. Oh, France is so incredible. Normandy, huh? Normandy. Okay, he knows the war's over, right? Yeah, he do, he does. I, I think he does. Okay. He, he should. Okay. He, he's a good guy. And so Dora Trillo, she works here with, at the Exchange. She's, she went to your comedy club in Vegas, and she loves you. Uh-oh. Thank you. Uh, Laura Krauss-Schmidt asks, is there any talks of a Raymond reboot? You know, there there isn't. And, and the reason is, is... Uh, and and this is what I love. One of the things I love about Ray, who who's such a really good guy, um, you know that we we they've talked about it. And there's really no show without the parents. They were they were the they were the heartbeat of that show. And you know t we you know we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. we wouldn't do it out of respect, and we wouldn't do it because it it, it would never work. Even even if we were all alive and 
they were 117 or whatever. Um, you can you know, I look at some of the reboots and it's really, you know, it's such a, a money grab to go for it. And it's like the people that were in the, the shows in the original uh, episodes, they know it was lightning in a bottle. They know they can't recapture that. It was a different time. It was a different era. A lot of the time it, it, it was, it was something that had its own synergy and it's very, very difficult to recreate that. And when, you know, when you look at the shows that do reboot, they're really just, the writing isn't there. It's not organic anymore. It's just kind of recycling the episode that we've already seen. So I think that Ray and Phil, who created the show, may have a little little too much integrity to, to try to do that out of respect for the audience that was so loyal to us. I'm not putting down the reboots that happened. I think it's great. I just don't know creatively if it's something that you can really accomplish. Yeah, no, that, that's a great explanation. I got one, one last comment. Uh, Mark Matthews said, hey, Brad, Two Stupid Dogs was his favorite cartoon growing up. Oh, my, that was one of my first animated uh, uh, things. It was on Hanna-Barbera. It was a Saturday yeah. morning cartoon. Thank you. And, of course, I played. Uh, it was it was like if Robert was a dog. That was really the <laughs> way it was different. It was like, it was like I have a ball. Throw <laughs> it. It was like that type of. It was like if Robert was, uh, you know, was on the ambient or whatever. Yeah. That's what that. Uh, that's what that character. The two stupid dogs. It was a great, funny show. It was kind of before its time because it was way before Ren and Stimpy and all that yeah. other stuff. It was kind of these these two dogs that were as dumb as can be. But uh, we had a lot. Thanks for remembering that. That was uh, thirty five years ago. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> See, Tom, you're you're timeless, Brad. I, I I don't know if that's the word, Chief, but thank you. Timeless is a nice word for for you know seasoned. I'll tell you, seasoned is good. Seasoned okay. is good. <laughs> yeah, it's like pop pop, like pop pop. Pop pop. pop. There you go. Yes, pop pop <laughs> is timeless. <laughs> he is the greatest. So so, Brad, what, what's next for you? You got, you got anything you can share with this that you're working on? Well, I'm uh, I, I'm working on a new uh, show on Apple TV called High Desert. It's uh, the star of the show is Patricia Arquette, who's really amazing. And you may uh, uh, remember her from Escape from Denimora. She also won the Oscar for the movie Boyhood. Incredible actor. It's a very dark comedy about... Um, a bunch of people that live in the high desert of California. Uh, I play in uh, a, a grizzled old private investigator that's kind of down on his luck. Uh, his personal life, his professional life is kind of hitting a wall. Um, you know, I always wanted to be like that great type of detective like Rockford or, or one of those people. And I've just ended up working in this, podunk town with really not the kind of crime going on that's ever interested me. I was never able to make a difference. Um, and then I meet Patricia Arquette, who is kind of like a grifter. And uh, she's also a recovering addict and alcoholic. And the show deals with grief and addiction. And uh, again, trying to find your place in life. Uh, where we belong, coming of age for any age again. And it's a very dark comedy and it really deals with some tough, tough uh, subjects. And what's great about it is um, it talks about things that, that people struggle with without being preachy. You know, she's like a, a recovering addict. She's had a lot of trauma and pain in her life, but she isn't able to get clean right away. She falls off gets back on the sobriety, back and forth. So it's realistic, but it's darkly very, very funny. And uh, Jay Roach directs it. He directed all the, um, the, uh, honey, what's the, uh, the movies with Mike Myers? 
Oh, Austin Powers. Do you hear the anger in her I, voice? I, 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 Austin <laughs> Powers! <laughs> like, like, what are they? Austin Powers and uh, Meet the Parents. He, the, and Ben Stiller's a producer. Matt Dillon is um, in it, who's still very handsome after uh, all these years. So it's a huge ensemble cast. And uh, I think it's going to come out in the fall on Apple. And we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's great to be able to, you know, to, to still work. And, and if it all goes to hell, I'll be at the MGM across from the food court. And you and I will have a corn dog, Chief. We'll talk about Absolutely. the old days. <laughs> That's a date. You got it. As a reminder for our viewers, Cha Cha Roll Smooth is out now on Apple Plus, Apple TV Plus. And Brad, where can viewers go for the latest and greatest on all things Brad Garrett? Well, uh, my Instagram is uh, what's that smell? <laughs> dot, oh, no, it isn't. I'm sorry. Now, now, Chief, were these the people that were on your show? Yeah, yeah, all yeah. Some people? of them. Oh, yeah, no, no, all of them. them. Yeah, oh, so no, all of them were on my show. Yeah, yes, sir. I, oh, those are the you know, days. I don't like to Look get, how young I, I was was there. <laughs> Yeah, braggadocious. That's that's wonderful. Look at these people. Oh my God, I'm such a hack compared to. Me. Yeah, so that's my Instagram. I don't post a lot. Sometimes I'll, you know, have a, a story of me eating a waffle or something exciting. But um, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. And, and also, so since you're going to plug, let me plug too. So for our Chief Chat viewers, uh, this episode okay. will be available on YouTube and Spotify. So you can rewatch re with your friends. No, 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 no. Okay. What? what? <laughs> no, I, I don't want this out there. I thought this was just for us. Okay. No, All right. This is for the world. This, the, we got to let the world that. see this. I love that. So we'll, we'll be we will be back next month, uh, Chief Chat viewers, on seven July at eleven uh, eleven hundred Central Standard Time with John Coyle, and on twenty one July at eleven hundred with NBA great Shaquille O'Neal. No way! No yes way. way! Yes way! <laughs> You're gonna have Shaq on. I'm gonna have Shaq on. Yes, sir. Oh, so I won't be the tallest guest anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you're the tallest guest up to this point right now. Have you ever interviewed Shaq? No, no. This will be my first time talking to him. Well, what an honor. Some of those people that you have on there. And, uh, well, that's that's incredible. Hey, uh, ask him if that if that hot ice really helps him. What is that icy hot? <laughs> icy, icy hot. hot. I, I, can I, I, doubt, I doubt it. How much icy hot would he need for that dumper? I mean, that is, that is a big... <laughs> I mean, they would have to like bring it up in like huge drums, you know. That it would be like I've had, I've had, you know. I, 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 I ran out. I got the icy hot immediately. I put it on Area Fifty One, and I feel like I feel like a new person. It's just incredible, you know. When you're big people, you know your joints hurt. You know that, right? What 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 are you five three, Chief? Oh no no, I'm I'm six one. You'll grow. You know, the, the, the camera the camera takes up it adds 10 pounds and makes you like six inches shorter on camera. So Okay. Well that's good. That's good. <laughs> I, I need help in both there. Oh, that's great. Shaq's gonna be on. Wow. Yeah, yeah. No, I want I want to ask him that. how they fit him in that little Buick. I remember he was in a commercial in that Buick and they had to take a picture of him or they filmed him inside the Buick. I'm like it probably took you 25 minutes to even get inside that that little bit of car. Do, do you want to know how they did this? And and please, you can you can confirm this with him. He put the car on like a hat. He just picked it up. You know, he picked it up. He went, I've I've a hat, I've a hat, and he just put it right there. What, what I heard, what I heard, and you can confirm it. They they took the chairs out of the car. They put him in the chair on the stage and they lowered the car from a crane wow right over him right 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 over him That's, yeah he's a, he's a, he's yeah. a very big human being he he really is 
He really is. <laughs> and a good, a good man too. A, Absolutely. A good man too. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know him, but I, I follow him on my space. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Brad, man, we could sit here and really talk to you all freaking day, but but uh, I appreciate you for chatting with us. Uh, this means so much to our military family, um, and just to have people uh, that have been in the game for so long to to spend you know the past fifty minutes just just kind of you know letting us get to know you a little bit better. I think that that just speaks volumes of the type of person that you are. So we appreciate you. Uh, you can you. finally get off the toilet because I know your legs probably fell, fell asleep. Uh, oh, you know, boy. Being, being on the toilet for so long. So oh, I, I, I understand I that I've been there before. I don't even remember eating that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Emma. What'd you say, Emma? You don't have to yell. Okay. My love to all of you. My 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 appreciation to all of you. All of the the wonderful uh, families out there. Again, I thank you, and I'm going to hold you up for that, Chief. Believe yeah, me, no, Shaq won't invite Shaq won't invite you to the mansion. You know he exactly. won't. Do, I'm inviting exactly. you to the crib, man. I'm inviting oh, no, you no, to no, Vegas. I appreciate, I appreciate that, and I definitely have to take you up on that offer. So thank you so much for that. Uh, if you don't mind hanging yeah. on until uh, after the live, so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes. But uh, it's been a a pleasure. Oh, I don't to want you. to do any. I've we, done we, enough. I, I just <laughs> just just two more minutes, Brad. Two more minutes. Okay. Uh, Pop, wait, hey Emily, could you tell Pop Pop we just need two more minutes? I don't know. It's almost it's close to nap time for Pop Pop, but I'll, I think he'll hang on. I think he'll hang on. <laughs> Come on, Pop Pop. I <laughs> smell <laughs> burnt toast. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we, Brad, thank you so much, and uh, and we wish you all the best. Yeah. And Chief Chat out.